it's about time I show you the one guitar that I'm probably never gonna sell because it's my first serious expensive Gibson Les Paul Custom. I'm talking about my 2013 Gibson Les Paul Custom Silverburst. Adam Jones, what are you doing here? You're not the same guitar as my Gibson Les Paul Custom. Get out of here, get back on the wall here. Anyway, where were we? Oh, here we go. My 2013 Gibson Les Paul Custom that I bought all the way back in 2014 and I'm gonna keep in my collection because I wanna see it age and it already started to get yellow and greenish. It is my first Les Paul Custom and now I'm gonna demonstrate it for you guys. <laughs> Before I move on, let's see what the Gibson Custom Shop were up to back in 2013, starting with the Ace Fairly Budokan. A friend of mine has this guitar, hopefully I will get to review one, it's pretty cool. Next up, the Les Paul Ultima. Mm, I'm not sure what to think about this one, the headstock is interesting, the elephant in the room, obviously the fingerboard, eh, it's a bit too much for me. Oh man, check out that mother of pearl uh, binding. Anyway. Next up, we got the Randy Rhodes Les Paul Custom. I have a Les Paul Custom Alpine White from 2008 and everybody thinks it's the Randy Rhodes because it started to get a lot yellowish like this. A pretty cool guitar. Next up, we have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Les Paul. An interesting truss rod cover, no diamond on the headstock, 80s style of the bridge and <laughs> interesting. Yeah, definitely I want to check this one out if I manage to find it. The Kirk Hammett Flying V all the way to 2013. They were doing the Kirk Hammett signature with the EMG pickups. Now it's a big craze, but yeah, they were doing it even back then. And now let's check out what we are here about. The Fretless Wonder, the 2013 Les Paul Custom. This is the official listing in the Gibson website, you can pause and read it. The guitar came in a couple of finishes. Antique White, Ebony Heritage Cherry Sunburst, Wine Red and Silver Burst. The guitar that I'm gonna show you guys today. The specs were solid mahogany body, rich light fingerboard, the pickups that I'm gonna show you, Nashville Tunomatic Bridge and so on and so on. There was also another page with the features, I'm gonna leave it on screen for you guys. And now I'm gonna tell you the story of my personal Les Paul Custom Silver Burst. These were expensive, even back in 2014 they were around $5,000. Back then I was living in another country and I was working as a test driver for armored vehicles. Not exactly a music related job, but the money was good and I was able to buy guitars. But still I wasn't able to afford a $5,000 guitar. Luckily, in my country, in the shop that is actually next doors from me now, they had this Silver Burst. It was already at around $4,000, I think, and then it was Christmas, so they had a discount for all of their guitars for 20% off. Or roughly around $3,300, which was a steal for this Silver Burst. I immediately contacted a friend in Bulgaria, transferred the money, and they were able to get it for me. So here I was in another country and my silver burst waiting for me in my country. It took I think two months before I get back and were able to play it for the first time. 
and boy was I impressed. In fact, I was blown away. I didn't know back then that the Gibson Custom is gonna become my favorite model, my guitar of choice, my weapon of choice. Since then, I had five or six of these in different colors, but the Silver Burst remained in my collection. I never sold it. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know back then what Rich Light is, I didn't care. It had the cool serial number, it was affordable, it's a silver burst, who cares. Even now I don't care about the Rich Light fingerboard. I would get Ebony if I could. In fact I have a video explaining the difference, I'm gonna link it above, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it now. Maybe a 79 would replace it, but for now it's staying in my collection. I even got the chance to gig it, I think back in 2017 when I was in a band. We had a couple of shows. The first one I was playing the Silver Burst, the second one I played the Square Hero Kitty. And fun fact, nobody cared about the Les Paul Custom besides a couple of guitarists in the crowd. Everybody loved the Hello Kitty. The specs should be a breeze for me since this is my weapon of choice. We have one piece solid mahogany back with weight relief. I think two piece plain maple top with the silver burst finish. A one piece mahogany neck, rich light fingerboard, 22 medium jumbo frets and mother of pearl inlays. The custom headstock with the diamond grover tuners with the tulip tips. I think that's Korean nut, Gibson 490R, 498 T pickups. The Nashville Tunematic Bridge and the tail piece to go with it. Traditional controls for the Les Paul. Here's what's under the neck pickup. I did not expect this guitar to have a long neck tenon and it doesn't. The routing for the three-way switch and the pickup cables, gavit conductor wire. Under the bridge pickup we can see that silver paint without the nitro aged on top of it and a little bit of that maple top visible through the paint. Next up let's talk about the pickups. The neck pickup is the Gibson 490R, we got the Gibson USA logo under here and it has the chrome caps. This one is the Bridge 498T. So far these two are my favorite set of pickups. Slanted pickup rings, short screws for the neck pickup, long screws for the bridge. We got the traditional layout for the controls, a three-way switch, we got Bridge volume, neck volume, bridge tone, neck tone and I've replaced the speed knobs, originally the guitar came with the speed knobs but I think these top hats with the silver reflectors look much better. He here are the speed knobs that the guitar used to come with, this is the Adam Jones Epiphone signature. I still have the speed knobs, the original ones in the case but I definitely prefer the top hats. Let me know in the comment section which ones do you prefer. The 498T is a hot pickup and reads as one at 13.64k ohms, switching over to the 490R in the neck, much softer at 763, middle position 489. Same Nashville Tunematic bridge as on all of my Gibson Les Paul Customs PW written on the back of it, here it is. Thumb wheel adjustable for the height, the struts go in the body through metal inserts and this is what the tailpiece looks like, pretty substantial and heavy. And this definitely feels heavier than most. In fact, let's weigh this one to find out. It is 53 grams for the bridge and this one 90. Wow, that's heavy. 90 grams is definitely the heaviest I've weighed. Here's what the original pickguard looks like with the chrome bracket and I like to keep mine on because of the defect here on the corner. Also looks better. I'm gonna demonstrate something for you guys. This is the Adam Jones Epiphone Les Paul Custom in the antique silver burst color. The Gibson Custom has a nitrocellulose finish which gets yellow over time when it ages. In theory it will turn green like the Epiphone but my guitar is still mint because I kept it in the case all these years. Eventually though, in time, when the nitro gets yellow, the color will get like this, greenish. The Epiphone tries to replicate that. A nice fade for the silver burst paint, this in my opinion is a good example of a silver burst finish. The binding is not exactly the best one I've seen on Gibson Les Paul Custom, in fact somebody messed it up here, it's not perfectly flush with the neck and the body. Somebody messed up. There's also a problem with the lacquer, the nitro here. This is where the pick guard edge touches the body, it's almost like there's no nitro here. This can be considered as a huge QC miss. Other than that I have a slight chip of the binding here, a fond memory when I was in a band and the drummer 
was walking around with his twin drum pedal not paying attention and he smacked right on the top of my guitar, luckily he hit the edge of the binding. The silver burst pattern continues on the sides of the guitar as it should and as I mentioned the binding is a bit problematic as you can notice here. Speaking of the binding, see how it started to get yellow on my guitar, exactly what I'm waiting for. I can't wait for the nitro to turn yellow and give this guitar a greenish finish but I'm not gonna force it, I want it to turn naturally. As I mentioned the binding is not exactly flush with the neck uh, which is okay for me, the fret nips are perfect. Also the fingerboard is not made out of ebony, this is rich light but a lot of people cannot tell the difference but check out these mother of pearl inlays, they're perfect all around the entire fingerboard. Korean nut, these are not made from bone, multiply binding for the headstock, mother of pearl, custom diamond. The Gibson with the dotted eye logo is also made of mother of pearl. The tuners are Grover with the tulips, my favorite. The truss rod is one way traditional and as you can notice the headstock also has the silver burst pattern on the side and the back as well. The usual truss rod cover for a Les Paul Custom, two screws, two ply, mine is starting to get a little yellow and I've managed to crack it here near the top screw already. I was extra careful with this guitar but obviously it happens often. The nut is 42.8 or almost 43mm wide, 1.68 inch. The 12th fret is at 52.5mm or 2.06 inches. Thickness of the first fret 21.5mm or 0.84 inch. Thickness of the 12th fret 24.5mm or 0.96 inch. Body thickness 50.5mm or almost 2 inches, 198. The perfect pickup ring distance of 60mm or 2.36 inches. Traditional radius of the fingerboard 305mm or 12 inches, 24.75 inch scale length. The perfect neck profile for me, the rounded of 60s C shaped. This one is a bit flatter though. Here's what the back of the guitar looks like, the same silver burst teardrop shape. The tiny dots that you're seeing are parts of uh, shirts that had logos on them. Remember when you're playing guitars with nitro make sure you don't play with shirts that had logos that come off easily. Anyway, here's the routing for the three-way switch, switchcraft in here and the routing for the electronics. These are the stock Gibson 500k pots, small capacitors here, the gavit wires, ground wires circling all the pots. I'm not exactly happy with the way Gibson wires their electronics but it is what it is, could be a lot more neat in here. Rectangular chrome plate for the output jack and these are replacement strap buttons, I've put shaller on this guitar because my straps use shallers. The back of the one piece mahogany neck also has the silver burst pattern on it. Luckily for me the nitro is already starting to age and it's yellower. These cuffs are from regular stands, remember nitro finish shouldn't be put on regular stands, they should be special stands that don't leave marks. It is my personal guitar, I'm not gonna sell it so I don't care. Gibson custom logo, no volute on the back of this neck, the back of the Grover tuners and the serial number reads CS300310. Around 2012 Gibson Custom used to do these covers for the 3-way switch, later they switched to the all metal ones that I have on my 2019 Les Paul Custom. This one looks good as well. It has some relief to it, it's made out of metal and the Gibson Custom logo same as on the case. There was also a Gibson Custom gold sticker on the pickguard that I kept for a long time. This is what the cover for the electronics looks like. Since this is my own personal guitar, I'm gonna use the gauge that I prefer, 946. Usually I use the NanoWeb Elixirs, but uh, I don't have them right now in stock, so I'm gonna go with the OptiWeb. This one is supposed to have a little less coating and feels like normal strings. I'm gonna give them a go, I haven't tried them in a long time. I always go with Elixirs because they last the longest uh, and uh, with my personal guitars I barely touch them and they sit in the case for 6 months and I, when I pick them up the strings would be dead if they're not Elixirs. But usually I prefer the Nano Webs because of the feel on the fingers. The Opti Webs feel like regular strings but anyway I'll give them a go. This is the original hard shell case and it was used for the Gibson Custom, Les Paul Custom from I think 2011 to early 2021. Then they switched back to the black ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 latches. My latches used to be gold but they started turning silver like this and I actually like it. The Gibson Custom logo, leather handle. 
Inside we have this purple pink lining which actually looks pretty good with the silver burst guitar in there. Here it is without the guitar, some padding for the back of it and this compartment holds some strings, accessories and it was made in Canada. What do we got in here? These are the original strap buttons with the long screw, I'm gonna keep them. The original black speed knobs that the guitar came with, Gibson custom uh, label. This is the sticker that was on the pick guard, I already mentioned this one. I kept it for a long time. And this is the key for the case. Next up, we have the certificate, I'm gonna say, show it to you in a minute. And this is the pre-pack checklist. For a long time I thought my guitar was made in 2012, but no, it was in fact made in 2013 as the serial number indicates. Good thing that I gave it to this guy who has a YouTube channel so I can figure it out, huh? Yeah, this is what the certificate looks like, serial number is pretty cool, 300-310. Not gonna lie, I thought my guitar was made in 2012, but anyway. In here we have a cool gift from a friend of mine, Danny. Danny demonstrated the Zach Wild signature BFG, as you remember. He got this pick from a Zach Wild concert and gave it to me as a gift. This has to be my lightest Les Paul Custom, I think my black one is at 4600, the Alpine white is at whopping 5000. Still feels heavy when I play it on a strap though, now let's hear it.
what do I think about my personal Les Paul custom silver burst? Well, obviously, I love it. Interesting fact, recently I reviewed the Epiphone Adam Jones and the Gibson Adam Jones standard, but I didn't buy the Gibson Les Paul custom silver burst and the Dito VH4 amp because of Adam Jones. I just loved the silver burst finish. I had the Thunder Horse Explorer in silver burst and I was considering the Adam Jones Les Paul standard. That's, that's just my color, I love it. Now to be fair, 2013 is not exactly the best year for a Gibson Les Paul Custom because of the problems that they had with the wood materials, uh, the fingerboard is rich light, not ebony, purists prefer ebony, obviously. Also the binding is not perfect as you've seen, but it's still a silver burst and ever since Adam Jones got back with uh, his new signature models, the silver burst had skyrocketed in price. So if you want one right now, unfortunately you're out of luck. The used ones are expensive, the 79s are crazy expensive, the VOS, the Adam Jones signatures are hard to find and they're almost double in price now. I've seen some used examples outside of Reverb in the German eBay or some other places. So you should watch out for some of these, I guess. I guess you have to be patient and keep looking for one.